All right, guys, welcome to today's video. If you're new here to the channel, consider subscribing to keep up to date with the latest gaming industry news, rumors, and leaks with a heavy focus on PlayStation. And occasionally we will take a look at Xbox, Nintendo, and PC. As always, timestamps are available in the description. So we are starting off with the next Tomb Raider game currently in development, which is set to take place in India. A reasonably compelling rumor is doing the rounds that suggests that the next Tomb Raider game in development at Crystal Dynamics and set to be published by Amazon Games will be an open world epic set in India. Traversal methods will be by motorcycle and parachute, and it sounds like Lara Croft's next adventure could be yet the most expensive one to date. According to the V Scooper over on Twitter, who has a pretty good track record for predicting things like this, but it's primarily in TV and films, not necessarily games, so take it again with a pinch of salt. They allege that the game will take place in northern India, with the story following Lara's quest to uncover the ruins and artifact from the reign of King Ashoka. In follow-up tweets, the V Scooper alleges that the tale will occur after a natural disaster. In addition, Lara will need to contend with a society of raiders, a group of competing treasure hunters, supposedly inspired but unaffiliated with Croft herself, with opposing ideals and agendas. I mean, I suppose in principle it sounds pretty decent, but I haven't really played a decent Lara Croft game for many, many years, so I suppose before I can get excited, I would need to see a little bit of gameplay about this game, this particular adventure set in India, before getting excited about the game. So I'll look forward to I'll, let's see what happens let's watch this space and uh, we'll see what the gameplay looks like and if it's worth getting excited about so let's move on in my previous video I discussed how Sony backtracked on the whole Helldivers 2 PC game requiring a PSN account linking mechanism well Ghost of Tsushima studio Sucker Punch says a PSN account will not be required for the upcoming Steam version of their game at least in single player mode following backlash over Sony's decision to make PSN account linking mandatory for Helldivers 2 a decision which has since been reversed, Sucker Punch took to X to point out that it will not be required for the single player game or Ghost of Tsushima. They go on to say, just so you're aware, a PSN account is required for Legends Online multiplayer mode and to use PlayStation Overlay. It's not required to play the single player game. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut will be released on PC on May 16th. I suppose that's a fair point, right? If you want to play the single player game, you just need to download the game from Steam, right? And up, you're up and running, off you go. Play hack and slash and do whatever you want brilliant game however to play online or to use the playstation overlay then it needs to be connected to your psn account i suppose given ghost of tsushima 4 is four years old even though the online mode is exceptional i suspect the single player game is what will drive sales for this one rather than the desire to play the legends mode even though it is excellent i think what's going to drive people on this one will be the single player game now specifically given that many people will not be able to access the psn account or they won't want to connect to it so i think the single player is what will drive this game forward. I can't wait to play Ghost when it lands on PC. This will be my second PC purchase. Really looking forward to this game on my PC on max settings. The game looked brilliant and played brilliantly on the PS5 and I want to see how much more improved it looks on my PC. My other game I have on PC is Red Dead Redemption 2 which honestly I was blown away by how good the game looks. So I'm really looking forward to playing Ghost of Tsushima on PC and I'll let you know my views on it in comparison to my PlayStation 5 experience. Okay, let's move on to some positive news. Retailers and PlayStation Direct I've seen a large restock of the PlayStation Portal, with Sony celebrating the news with an accolades trader for the handheld. The PS Portal is now readily available at PlayStation Direct in the US and the UK, while trailers including Target and Best Buy have also had the device in stock. The reason why this is a big deal is because the PS Portal greatly exceeded expectations at Sony, to the point where the device was quite difficult to get hold of, not to the levels of the PS5 scarcity that we saw during the pandemic, where you literally could not get a PS5 unless you went to you know Amazon or eBay and bought one off a scalper. You literally could not get a PS5. Many places had sold out on the PS Portal, especially around the holiday and the Christmas time in 2023. You literally couldn't find one anywhere. But they are back in stock now. Sony released a new firmware update for the PS5 Portal early last month, which improves the stability of the systems. Now I've held off getting a PS Portal mainly because I couldn't really find one around Christmas time when I was te very tempted to pick one up. Um, so even though they are back in, I'm going to hold off because I want to learn more about what Sony intends to do with the uh, the handheld space. There were talks earlier, earlier this year, that PlayStation were going to launch a new handheld in a couple of years' time. And if that's the case, I'm going to hold off and invest in that rather than the PS Portal. But if the handheld is like five years away, then I might just get the Portal instead. Okay, guys, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about today's topics. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.